Hey friend, I'm Amy, a health coach here at Flip Your Leaf Coaching, and today we're going to talk about when you should start the low FODMAP diet. Now, I feel like the first thing we should talk about is who the low FODMAP diet is for. So just so we're clear, the low FODMAP program is a short term tool used to help people with IBS identify common food triggers. It is not a long term symptom management plan or a weight loss program. Now, if that's something you need, I can definitely help you with both of those things. But this is not the video you're looking for. Okay, now that we're all on the same page, how do you know if starting the low FODMAP program is right for you? Well, that's complicated. And I know that is the worst, but there are three specific things you can do to help determine if the low FODMAP program is right for you and your unique body. The first thing is to make sure you're running an IBS friendly lifestyle. IBS sits in each of our bodies differently, and that means things that are healthy and right for one person may not be healthy or right for you. The way your body reacts to triggers is also going to be a little different. So you're going to need to do a little sleuthing to figure out what tools are right for your personal IBS toolbox. Now, even if you do decide the low FODMAP diet is right for you, it's only going to be one of the tools you're using to manage your daily IBS symptoms. So by developing good IBS hygiene, you're giving your gut the best chance for success. Now, under the lifestyle changes umbrella, we have things like improving sleep hygiene, which isn't just about the amount of sleep that you're getting, but also about the quality of sleep that you're getting. We also have adding gentle movement. Now, this one always feels a little bit dangerous because when I say movement, people's brains tend to jump right to exercise. And I know that is a loaded word for so many people. So let me be clear. By movement, I mean making sure your body isn't staying still all day. That might mean finding opportunities to walk around or shake your butt or find a little wiggle here or there because movement can encourage gentle muscle contractions in your gut. It can help relieve painful trap gas. It can help your body relax. It can calm down the communication between your gut and your brain. So there are lots of ways that daily movement can be beneficial to you that do not involve training for an Ironman. Now, a final piece under the lifestyle umbrella is really finding ways to manage your day-to-day -day stress. And I know saying manage your stress is really easy from this side of the screen. And I know that there are stressful things that happen to you every day that are out of your control. But I would encourage you to take a look at the things that are really stressing you out and see if there might be a way to lessen that for you. Now, that might mean delegating tasks at home or at work. It might mean setting an alarm on your phone to remind you to take a deep breath or get a coffee or go pee. It might be starting a daily meditation or taking up yoga or setting aside time to read your favorite book, whatever you need to do to feel balanced and at home in your body. Okay, so tip number one is really examining the patterns and habits in your lifestyle and making sure that you're setting your body up for success. Tip number two is about experimenting with your diet. Now, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, that's why I'm here to learn about the low FODMAP diet. But I want you to know that there are lots of ways that food can impact your body. And some of them are much easier to spot than FODMAPs. So before you dive into a six week elimination phase, I would really encourage you to try a few of these. Now, hold up, before you start pulling things out of your diet, make sure to check in with your healthcare team. Some tests like the test for celiac disease require you to be consistently eating the food being tested leading up to the actual test. So if you're looking to test things like gluten, make sure you touch base with your healthcare team and see if there are any tests they wanna run before you remove anything. Okay, so dietary changes. One thing you might wanna investigate is, are you getting enough of the right kinds of fiber? We'll talk about fiber more in depth in another video, but for today, what I want you to take away is that there are two types of fiber that directly impact IBS. The first is called soluble fiber, which dissolves in the water of the digestive tract and creates a gel that's gonna coat your poop. Soluble fiber can slow down digestion, keep you full longer, and can help control spikes in blood sugar, and it's most helpful for people who are prone to diarrhea. Insoluble fiber is not broken down during digestion and it adds bulk to your poop. This can speed up gut transit time and is helpful for people prone to constipation, but it can also be very irritating to your gut. So if you're thinking of adding insoluble fiber to your diet, make sure you're adding it very, very slowly and also increasing your water intake to make sure that everything stays running smoothly. Now, just so we're clear, our bodies need a balance of both types of fiber. So you do not need to go through your diet and switch from one type of fiber to another. 
But if you are struggling with constipation or diarrhea, you might want to take a look at your diet and see if there is sort of a shift you can make between the balance of soluble or insoluble fiber that might help set your body up for success. Now, in addition to fiber, you might also want to take a look at general gut irritants like coffee, alcohol, soda pop, artificial sweeteners, chocolate, spicy food, greasy foods. Try cutting these foods out for a week or two and see if you feel a shift in your symptoms. If you don't feel anything different, you'll know that these likely aren't the main culprits behind your symptoms. But if you do notice a shift, try adding each type of food back into your diet one at a time and see if one or more groups are triggering your symptoms. If they do, great work. You track down a trigger. Feel free to play around here and see if you can reintegrate that food in a way that works better for you. Now, since we're clearly on the topic of poop, we should also talk about natural laxatives. Now, most people know that prunes are a natural laxative, but other foods like plums, licorice, ginger, turmeric, and inulin can also cause diarrhea. So if you're suffering from IBS that leans towards diarrhea, you might wanna look through your diet and see if you can find any sneaky laxatives. Also, if you're taking any medications, it can also be helpful to look through their listed side effects for symptoms like constipation, diarrhea, bloating, abdominal pain, if you find a side effect that might be impacting your IBS, you can always talk to your pharmacist to see if there's a different way that you can take that medication, like with or without food or first thing in the morning or before bed or whatever, to lessen the impact of the side effects on your body. You can also always talk to your doctor about other medications that might do the same thing for you without impacting your IBS. So just to recap, Step number one is making any lifestyle changes that might help improve control over your digestive symptoms. Step number two is to do a little sleuthing to test common gut irritants and see if tweaking those might also impact your daily symptoms. The third thing you can do is enlist the help of someone who knows about guts to help you make a solid game plan. Now that might be a FODMAP trained health coach like me or a FODMAP trained dietitian or your GI or your family doctor. But by choosing someone who is trained to work with angry guts, you'll be able to focus your time and attention on things that are truly helpful to you. For example, a FODMAP trained specialist can help you decide if making lifestyle or dietary changes might be helpful for you, or if it might be more effective to jump right into the low FODMAP program. So to recap, when deciding whether the low FODMAP diet is right for you, first double check the easy things, which are lifestyle changes like sleep, movement, and stress relief, and diet changes like avoiding common gut irritants, managing your fiber, looking for sneaky laxatives, and double checking medications to make sure they aren't exacerbating your symptoms. If these changes were enough to make a dent in your symptoms, that is fantastic and you have saved yourself the whole kerfluffle of doing the low FODMAP diet. But if you've made all the IBS friendly changes and you didn't notice a shift in your symptoms or the change wasn't as significant as you had hoped, try adding a gut specialist to your team to help you learn what tools are right for you and your unique body. If you're ready to start your low FODMAP diet now, I would love to hear from you. As a Monash certified health coach and nutritionist, I can help you build a custom low FODMAP diet full of tasty, normal food. Make sure you have options for how to eat out or travel and make sure the program that we design fits your actual life. If you think working with me might be helpful for you, go ahead and sign up for a free strategy session using the link in the description box below. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos on the mechanics of IBS, the low FODMAP diet and how to make your body feel like home. I'll see you in my next video.